Now I gotta patch this up. Oi, oi, oi. That's gonna be a challenge. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ryan Cook here from Carver Kings and SawValley.com and uh, Saw Dogs, if you remember that show. But I'm uh, gonna do this video log. It was a little bit postponed due to the COVID 19. I haven't carved for the last month. We had it really hit home and it was pretty crazy, you know, like everybody always says, uh, you know, it's just numbers until it's actually your family. So everybody's on the mend, everybody's getting healthy. I hope everybody stays healthy, but I wanted to do a video vlog this year and just see if it works. I have no idea if it will work. If it does work, awesome. If it doesn't work, whatever. I'm gonna have fun learning how to edit and, you know, learn something new. And uh, so what I'm gonna do throughout this process is, and this next year, is uh, document like my everyday carving life. So whether it's, you know, commissions or appearances, which by the looks of it are not gonna be happening very much this year. Hopefully things change, but um, I'm also working on a vineyard and um, we are gonna be opening a winery. So I'm gonna talk about that and I'm gonna have to film that now too because really it's all about kind of keeping it real and the one thing about Carver Kings and Saw Dogs and you know these shows that I've been a part of even the hills I was on the hills <laughs> in my early 20s for like two lines um, was that they're all scripted and everything's kind of bullshit so the carvings were real but when you put five pros together or you know three pros on one carving not much is gonna go wrong so a lot of the time everything is over amplified and dramatized dramatized dra dramatized whatever you know I'm just gonna keep it real so I uh, will talk about tools I use what's going on with the carving process uh, my day-to-day -day life I'm gonna do a lot of fishing as most of you know I love fishing so a little sub walk doing its job Oh yeah, baby, that's a good fish. Oh, that's a good fish. Oh yeah. Here you go. Nada. Right now I'm working on a wolf bear bench. It was, uh, should have been done last month. We're about two months behind. And I don't remember if I have filmed much of the beginning of the bear blocking process. I think I started it. So if I did, I'll probably cut back. You know, this is a really cool bench. It's a, it's a big commission. It's, you know, around five grand and um, a, a four person seated bench six feet of board space or five feet whatever i kind of figure out or find or a good slab of wood that works and um i'm carving it in second growth cedar which is normally not what i carve but i really like the way the green looked on this piece and um yeah i think it's going to be a great great sculpture so right now the bear is blocked out but there was a huge crack right in the center of the nose so i had to cut out that that's been the biggest issue with doing doing that. I'm gonna cut a couple of wedges and I'm going to fit them right into the nose, glue it, screw it, and uh, you know, come, come back to it. And from that, I will then work on the wolf. I'm doing both kind of like leaning down, but a little more aggressive. I downloaded a ton of pictures and I'm going to uh, kind of reference different looks. I mean, you can always do a standard bear, which is like, you know, closed mouth, work on the shape, try and get the get it anatomically correct as best as I can do. And, um, but today I kinda wanna give each animal like a little snarl, like more personality, like a kinda like, what the fuck are you doing here kinda feel. You know, I wish I had more time to spend two months on one piece, but at the same time I have to make it so my time is uh, what I value it at and that's a that's a really tricky thing to kind of create and people are, are always asking me you know what how do you charge for what you charge and for me you know having done it for so many years and and I'm not even doing it as many years as a lot of my mentors but 
I've kind of figured out a mathematical equation to my time to value to wood cost and you have to really think about that when you're becoming a carver because a lot of guys are gonna go and watch me and go oh I can do that and a lot of guys are gonna be better than me and you know maybe they're newer and they they just can't sell the same piece for the same price which which sucks because you know it's every, every carver's different is what I'm saying and in every carver being different you kind of have to find your niche your spot and what you want to do and how you want to accomplish what you're gonna be I mean for myself you know a lot of guys know me I'm a bang for your buck kind of carver I love carving for money and I love making money and I love the art form of it and I love the pieces and the people that I get to encounter but at the same time you know I gotta provide for my family and make sure that my daughter has food on the table and yeah it's gonna be a fun couple of months I mean hopefully I can uh, entertain you guys enough and you can learn some stuff and um, we'll get to the shop and kind of maybe fast track through some videos and I'll do some voiceovers as I go and kind of explain what I'm doing and slow them slow them slow some things down and uh, and also speed some, speed some things up I'm gonna slow some things down and I'm gonna speed some things up now I gotta patch this up oi 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 that's gonna be a challenge I got the wedges in so basically we let it sit for the night and now I have to cut it all away and then figure out what epoxy I'm going to use to fill the, uh, the existing cracks and then once we're done we carve it and paint it over. So I just cut some wedges going with the grain of the wood to best match it. So it doesn't look like it's gonna be bad. So right now we'll just cut it away and, and see how it looks. Come on, baby, wake up. So for making uh, an, a paste, I'm going to do this. So I just put this stuff in. And what I'm hoping is it'll dry really nice and then I'll just sand it away and it'll be solid. And uh, Bob's your uncle. And then when you airbrush it, you won't even notice. So I'll let that dry. For a bit and then I think that'll work. Cool, I gotta get this off. <laughs> cool. So as I wait for the epoxy to dry, I'm going to work on furring the bear and finish the claws. I want it to dig in, looking like it's growling. So right now the clients have asked me to make it more aggressive. So in doing that, I'm going to really snarl the nose up and back and then punch in the teeth. I'm going to lift up the lips so I expose the front teeth and really kind of emphasize the fact that this bear is hungry and like what are you doing here I use a Dremel to get in the eyes and the teeth and then once I get it all finished I'll basically start thinking time for painting so I grab the Iowata airbrush I do black first I hit the major accent lines and then I'm gonna come in with a brown flap sand it take it down a bit and then I'm gonna come in with a lighter brown go over the whole animal until I'm kind of happy with it, burn it, and really create a texture that is going to work. As you can tell right now, the bear is looking good. We are ready to get it mounted to the other side. So in the next video, I am going to be carving a wolf. Big wolf. 
going to be really fun to watch. It was a really challenging piece. Ran into some serious rot, big patching, and we have to also mill the planks. So I'll be using an Alaskan mill and create, showing you guys how I do that. So tune in. If you learned anything, awesome. Give me a like. Makes me feel good. It'll make you feel good. Have a great day. Thanks so much for watching.